Hey everybody, Ugly Shader here with another YouTube video tutorial. And first things first, for those of you who have actually been following along with any of my tutorials, I'm sorry, I've totally been slacking. I haven't had a tutorial out in like two weeks now. And on top of that, I haven't managed to get any of the tutorials done for the weekly challenges out of my Facebook group. Again, that's 100% on me. I've been slacking and I'm sorry. Anyhow, today we're going to go ahead and uh, work on controlling the placement of textures on meshes with vertex maps. And a uh, few things about this. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let me clean this up real fast. Sorry, my usual hectic startup file, which isn't needed for this. Oops. Scoot that over. Let's put that back at the center. And turn on some screencast keys so you guys can follow along with me. There we go. Using vertex maps to control the, the texture on things is really, really handy, but only if your object has a decent amount of vertices. <clears throat> so like right here, we have just a normal plane scaled up to the size of our grid, size of eight. I just lifted it a pinch so we can't see the grid through it. That kind of bugs me, I guess. Anyhow, um, if I throw this into edit mode and we look at it, you can see we only have four vertices making up the face of our plane. And unfortunately for this particular manner of controlling the uh, textures and the materials, that doesn't work very well. This method really only works on objects that have a large amount of vertices. And I'll show you real quick why that is. If we go ahead and down here in our uh, selection mode for our, our 3D view window or whatnot. If we go ahead and switch this over to vertex paint and let me hit T to bring up my options for brushes and switch this down to black, I am trying to paint right there. And as you can see, nothing is happening. And that's because this method of control uh, basically relies on being able to stack information on the vertices of a mesh. So if I come over here and click on these vertices, you can see it clearly has an effect. However, again, if I were to just, ooh, way too far back, if I were to just work at that in the middle, we get nothing out of it. And that's because there's no vertices to paint. So this method of controlling textures doesn't really work that well for super low poly meshes or, or anything like that. Uh, more often than not, I tend, I find to use, uh, or sorry, I find I tend to use this method a lot more when it comes to things like landscapes and trees and stuff that have a, a, a large collection of vertices. So we'll go ahead and uh, go over both of those real quick and uh, I'll just show you how this, this is set up and how easy it can be to control different aspects of a texture with these vertex maps from the vertex painting option. So we'll start just by throwing a landscape in. And I'll go into mesh and oh, I don't have the add-on turned on out here on this computer. So let's go to user preferences under file or you can just control alt u to bring it up. And under our add-ons tab, I'm going to go ahead and type in, I think it's just landscape. I got land, and there it is, A-N-T landscape. And it's just an add-on that's built into Blender, ready to go for you. Come on, there you go. And check that and go ahead and save user settings. <clears throat> so now, when I go into my mesh selection, all the way down here at the bottom, I have an option for landscape. And this is a really nifty little tool. I mean, I, I got to hand it to them for this as an add-on. I really dig on this. It makes putting together rather simple terrains super, super, super easy. So for our example, we're going to pretend that we're making, um, say, like a lake scene, you know, or you know, not a big lake, but big enough that we'll have like a little swimming area, maybe a parking lot by it, a road that leads to it. And as a result, we'll want to put multiple uh, different, um, I guess you could say, materials on a single mesh. But instead of using multiple materials, we're going to basically get the same effect only only using one material. Uh, it has some advantages, it has some disadvantages. As I said, one of its biggest disadvantages is the number of vertices limits how you're able to paint the environment for your your information for our color map is what we're going to use it for, a masking map. But uh, 
<clears throat> one of its uh, super huge advantages that, that I really like or whatnot is uh, when it comes to baking. I find it's way, way easier to bake a mesh when all of, all of whatever texture is on that mesh is all contained inside one single material as opposed to having multiple materials. Anyway, we'll get to that in a second. Real quick, let's get a landscape for like a, a lake going on. And I guess I could do one right here in that little pocket, but I'm going to go ahead and take this off of the uh, hetero terrain or whatever it is and go to FBM Fractal. And that gives me the nice below ground as well as above ground mixture. So I got somewhere for uh, uh, whatever you call it, water retention, I guess. Um, this is way too mountainous though I'm thinking just something really simple so for its height instead of 0.5 I'm bring it to like 0.25 and now we have more of the height of like just some you know rolling hills in the background or something like that while I'm down here in the displacement settings I'm gonna go ahead and bring its fall off on the y-axis up so that it kind of you know extends all the way to the edges there on the y-axis just widen it up a bit make it easier for me to work with for this example um, also while I'm in here it's I mean it's kind of an acceptable terrain but it's really really like jagged almost and I'm thinking something more like softer rolling hills so for its depth I'm gonna bring it down to like four or five and there we go that smooths everything out for me gets more of that that just kind of rolling hill kind of appearance and you know what? That'll probably do it for the landscape. So let's go ahead and scale this up to 8 real fast. Oh, and just for reference, that landscape option, all of those settings that you get to play with go away as soon as you do anything else in the uh, scene or try to make any other changes to the, uh, the mesh that it is currently set on. So uh, just like when you import, or not import, but uh, create a, a sphere or a cube or something, you have options for how its resolution, basically how many times its faces are divided and so on and so forth. You have a list of options over here that go away as soon as you do anything else with that, that particular mesh. Same thing with this. You know, same thing with the, the tree editor, which we'll get to here in a second. Anyhow, so there's our land. Uh, we want some water in it, so I'll just grab a plane. And I'm not actually going to uh, do much with any of this, just for reference, have it in there, you know. So I'll scale that to the same size as our terrain. And, oh, yeah, something like... Yeah, we'll make it kind of a small lake. That or these are really big rolling hills, you know. So that'll represent our water. Now that that's in place, I can go ahead and scroll that down grab it, move it on the uh, uh, X and Y axes and scoot it over there. It's just not so big now. Anyhow, so I'm thinking like a swimming area around here, uh, maybe a parking lot right here, and then a road that leads out that way and maybe out that way or something like that. I mean, you could really have some fun with it, go all crazy, give yourself like a... Uh, um, you know, like a, a dam across your water and then like a little bait house off on the side or something. This this is just really, really rough for for the example we're trying to produce or whatnot. So with my uh, terrain selected, I'm going to go ahead and switch it over to Sculpt real fast. And let's smooth out uh, what's about that big in a brush and nice and strong. And we're just going to smooth out this area a bit. Ooh. I have symmetry lock on. There we go. Smooth out this area a bit real quick for where our, our swimming area beach sort of thing will be or whatnot. <clears throat> and I actually made that pretty big. So you know what? We'll put the, uh, the parking lot over here. So I'll make that decently large, uh, strong, and bring that up a bit right there and flatten that area out so our parking lot can go over there. All right, so we'll have a swimming area, a road, and a, and a parking lot or something like that. You could even do like, you know, docks out into the water and stuff. But again, this is just a, a really rough example for the sake of just trying to, uh, to show you how to use these vertex painting options. Okay, so there we go. There's our environment. And uh, do I need that? I don't think I need that up anymore. So if we go ahead and drag this over, let's switch that into rendered view, and let's brighten our background up a little bit. Uh, yeah, that'll probably be good. 
And while we're at it, let's go ahead and add a sun so that we could actually tell that uh, our environment still has texture to it. Where am I going? The sun. And I'll just give it a default of like 8, 8, 15. Now technically its location doesn't matter because the sun shines light everywhere. You know, it doesn't really matter where you put the sun lamp. Uh, what really matters is its angle and everything like that. But just to have it out of the way of the scene, I, I tend to do an 8, 8, 15 on, on its location. And let's set it to a negative 45 and a 45 so that it's cutting at... Uh, uh, roughly a 45 degree angle right across our terrain. So now if we go back in, we can actually tell that our terrain has shape to it. So for its base material, oops, that put me on the sun. I want to go back to there. Let's give it just a material, and we'll make it just kind of a brown color for like some dirt or whatnot. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's really dry today. Anyhow... So there we go. And what we want is we want to be able to use just this one material. We'll just call it ground for everything. We want to be able to use this material for the, the base of the environment as well as for the swimming area of the road and the parking lot. Now, another way to go about this is you could just go into edit mode and with your object being selected under the materials tab, you could just add another material and let's say we call this one uh, parking. Oops, there's an F in there. F in parking. Anyway, so we got our parking. And then you could come in and just select faces that you wanted to be associated with that particular uh, material that you just created. And while you have that material out of your list selected and the faces that you want it to be on selected, you can just hit assign. Maybe. Oh, I still have my circle selection up. Okay, now assign. And what that'll do is that'll actually assign that material to those specific faces. But again, that means that you now have more than one material on your, your mesh. And that's basically just what I'm trying to avoid with the vertex map painting. So what we're going to do is with our terrain selected, let me shrink this down. I'd go full screen, but I actually need the properties window. Our data tab over here in the properties window is what we're going to be using. And we have a category right here for our vertex colors. So let's switch this over to vertex paint. And as you can see, it automatically generated one for us by the name of coal, which I guess would just be short for color. Now, something to keep in mind is you can see that it has a capital C and a lowercase o and l. Later, when we use these maps that we're going to be creating, we are going to have to uh, basically call them by name in order to uh, use their, their functionality, their data information. So the name of the vertex map is very important. Also, what is very important, like aside from spelling, is capital. It is case sensitive. So here where it has a capital C, when I'm using that later on, I will need to use a capital C if I don't change this name. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, we have the base of our environment, which we don't need a vertex map for, and then we are going to have a swimming area, a road, and a parking lot, which means we're going to need three vertex maps. So I got the one there. I'm just going to go ahead and add two more. This one I'll call swim, S-W-I-M, for the swimming area, road for the road, and parking for the parking area. All right, so now with the swim selected, hit T to bring up my brushes, and we're already on black because I was messing with it a minute ago. We're going to shrink this brush down, and that's just uh, brush size is F for the hotkey, and strength is holding shift and then pressing F. And that just allows you to control uh, uh, the strength of your brush as well as the size. Anyhow, we're going to shrink this down, and I'm literally just going to paint with black on this, this white surface where I think my swimming area should be. Now, you could get really, really down in close and be really specific with it. You could use a masking, uh, uh, basically a masking image for your brush to uh, 
um, make it so that the texture only appears with certain, or the uh, the paint that we're putting down only appears with certain patterns and stuff like that. If you're curious about that, just go ahead and look at my uh, customizing the sculpting brushes tutorial, because in that one it goes over creating uh, masks for your brushes. But yeah, you could put a lot of detail into this. Obviously, for the sake of it, the tutorial, I'm not, and I'm just not going to. Sorry. Anyhow, so there we go. There's our swimming area. Now, a parking area, we'll put like right here, right up to the edge of the water. Why not? You know, you could model yourself in like some little wood posts that have a, a metal line hanging across them or something like that to keep people from accidentally rolling into the water or something. But, yeah, we're just going to paint it up to the water edge like that. So that'll be our parking area. Uh, let's make that a little bit bigger. That's not even as big as our swimming beach area or whatnot. So yeah, there's our parking area. And then we need a road. Uh, let's shrink that down a bit. And our road's going to run like that. And it can have a little path off going into our swimming area. And it can come out the other side of the parking area and just continue out the map. So that'll be our road. And there we go. We're actually done with our vertex painting. Basically, we've just created three sets of, of data information that are going to act almost like images, in a sense, that we could use as a, a mask in our node setup for our textures. So we can switch this back to object mode, get rid of that, and let's grab this and pull it down. And get a little zoomed in over here on our ground. And back to edit mode. So there's our ground, and this is our our diffuse or our current shader network for our ground and uh, yeah of course you know you could throw a um, a mix shader in here and then a glossy shader and plug that in and we're gonna set it to the same color as our ground and let's throw a Fresnel node on there. Why not? Give a little control to our glossiness. You can have whatever shader network you want with, with all the different procedural textures or anything like that set up for these. It's just all that really matters is how you control the way they mix together at the very end. So let me go ahead and duplicate this mix node, put it right there, and I'm going to move my ground to the bottom input. And then we are going to oh, just grab another diffuse shader. For now, we'll make whatever we're going to put in first green. And we can plug that in there. And of course, it's a mix shader. You know, it just mixes between the green and the brown. And what we are going to do is use our vertex map that we painted to control the factor of our mix. And that's actually really super easy. We just grab an input node, attribute, and then we plug the factor of that into the factor of our mix shader. And now, right now, obviously, it's not doing really anything of use, and that's because we have not named our attribute. We need to tell it what attribute we want it to look at. And for us, uh, let's go swim first. It'll be our swimming area. So we need to tell it to look at the swim attribute. So S-W-I-M. And again, spelling and capitalization is very important. You know, if I come back here and go capital S, W-I-M, and then hit enter, nothing has happened. And that's because down here, my attribute, my vertex color map, does not have a capital S. So Blender doesn't know what it's looking at. However, if I change that to a lowercase s, bam, instantly we get this green material appearing only where we painted it with our vertex map. And getting the rest of them in is just as simple. We're going to work from the bottom up, basically. I mean, you might be able to work from the top down. I don't know. It's just this is the way I tend to do it. So that's the way I'm showing you. Sorry. So let's add another mix shader. Throw that one in the bottom. We need another diffuse and another attribute. We can make our diffuse. Uh, let's make this one red and bright. Why not? It doesn't really matter for now. And then we plug in our attribute. Oop, missed. And right now we're getting red down there because, well, we still have our attribute set to swim. So we need to set this one. Eh, let's just go in order. This one can be road. R-O-A-D. And there you go. Now that 
as I said, this could represent whatever kind of material network you want, whatever group of nodes you'd like, so long as it goes through shaders and into this mix or whatnot. But there we go. This shader network is now represented on, on our terrain right there where it's supposed to be. And then, as you've guessed, we're just going to do the same thing again for the last one in line. So we're going to duplicate you guys, set you right here. Might as well make this blue, just keep going around our color wheel. That one goes in the top, the one from the previous goes into the bottom. This attribute will be parking. And its factor goes into the factor of the mix shader. And there you go. You now have one material on a single mesh with multiple different uh, ways of setting it up. Now again, this really only works on meshes that are decently high in vertices. You know, if this was just a single plane, well, in order to get this kind of effect going on, you're not going to be able to use vertex painting. You know, you're going to have to use a variety of different uh, textures as, as your masks inside the node network, like gradient textures and noise textures and so on and so forth. And you'll have to set those up and figure out ways to use them in order to mask the uh, colors that you don't want appearing. But yeah, for something that's got a lot of vertices, like terrain, this is a super, super easy way to lay out the textures for your paths, or where the grass changes to just dirt, or where the dirt changes to sand, so on and so forth. It just, it's a really easy way of getting it done. And as I said, what's important for me is that it keeps all of the textures inside of a single material so that you don't have to assign a bunch of different materials to your your mesh and uh, like I said for me the big thing on that is it makes baking really really easy when it's time to bake all your procedural uh, textures and materials and stuff to an image texture so you can export it to a, a different source like you know unity or unreal or something because you're making a game this just it makes controlling that really super simple um, oh, I did say I would go over one other thing or whatnot, and that is trees. So let's go ahead and delete you and delete you, and let's get a tree in the environment. So curve, sapling tree generator. I was almost afraid I wasn't going to have that add-on en enabled either. Uh, spin around, and well, we want to keep this simple and fast. So let's just load up a preset. Uh, let's go the small maple. And it needs leaves, so let's give it some leaves, show the leaves, and it needs more branches. Splitting, let's add another level. There we go. That was simple enough, so there we go. We have a nice uh, leafy tree. All right, so now say you're wanting to use this somewhere else, export it somewhere else, blah, 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 whatever. You want it unwrapped, but you want it all to be a single object. That actually tends to make uh, controlling the appearance of the, the leaves versus where the bark is kind of difficult, depending upon how you're going about it. The vertex maps can again be used to make that super, super simple. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and select the, uh, the, the branches of our tree and hide those real fast. Then with the leaves selected, we're going to go over to vertex paint and scale this up and just paint these guys black. And now rotate a bit let's turn wireframe on get them all painted black and just keep spinning around a couple times make sure you get them from every angle and stuff we just want all the leaves to be painted black and this is kind of one of the the nifty useful things about the vertex paint at least as far as in my experience I don't know if it if it's this way in anything before Blender uh, 2.75, I think is when I started, or the, the first Blender I downloaded, that it was like 2.77, I don't even know. Anyway, um, I can't guarantee this is going to work in all versions of Blender, but in 2.78, 2.79, I know for a fact right now it's working. Anyway, so now that we've gone in and we've painted all of those, oh, What's going on here? I went out of edit mode. Ah, wireframe was still on. Anyway, now that we've gotten those all painted, we can unhide our branches. And let's click one of them while holding shift so that, you know, we have a primary. And then control J to join those into a single object. 
Oh, actually, before I can make those a single homage object, let's go ahead and select our branches again. And Alt-C, because right now it's a curve, and I want to convert it to a mesh so that I could join it to the other mesh. All right, so there we go. So now, with everything selected, Control-J, join it to a single object. And, yep, we have it all as a single object. So there we go. Now, if I go back to my, uh, my vertex paint, you can see it actually kept that vertex mapping information for the leaves. So now we have an attribute preset up that separates our leaves from the, the rest of the tree, from all the branches in the trunk and stuff. So let's throw that into edit real fast. Drag you over to the side, give it a new material. Duplicate it shader, add a mix shader. Connect the... Oops connect those two together and we're going to make the leaves kind of a green color and the tree brown obviously and like i said you can put lots and lots of effort into the amount of detail that you put into that vertex painting and you can also put a whole bunch of effort into uh, the materials you actually choose to use for what you're doing again this is just something i'm I'm doing super quick just to show you how it's done and give you an example. Anyway, back to input, attribute, stick our attribute in there. And I didn't give this one a name, so by default for the object, it's just capital C, lowercase o, lowercase l. Capital C, lowercase o, lowercase l. Done. And there we go. We have green leaves and a brown tree. So yeah, it's, it's super, super simple when it comes to trying to control different... Uh, materials on the same mesh when you don't want to have a whole big list of materials for that mesh. Uh, like I said, I use it mostly when it comes to, to baking things, you know, that way I don't have to worry about multiple different materials that need to be like compiled in an image editor later or something to fit the UV unwrap of the object, so on and so forth. I can just control where my different uh, materials or whatever are going to show up based on uh, my, my vertex map that I've painted. Um, one more example of a way to use that on a tree. Let's go ahead and zoom out real fast and we can delete this. Let's add another sapling. And again, we'll just keep it super simple. Oh, I'm on branch splitting. I need to go to geometry. Select that same small, oh, not a small pine. I wanted that small maple again. All right, so now, just like last time, I'll go to branch splitting, bump it up to three, go to leaves, show leaves, da-da-da, and, uh, yeah, done. Okay, so this one is actually for just the leaves themselves. So we have our, our leaves or whatnot. So let's switch over to... Oops, select them and then switch over to our vertex paint and I am going to shrink my brush down and make it super weak like 0.1 maybe less yeah 0 0.08 will be fine and then I'm just going to gently and lightly oops actually before I do that I want to uh, turn wireframe back on and am I st yeah, I went back to heavy strength. So yeah, wireframe on. I'm just going to go ahead and gently paint around this outside edge like that. Not making it super dark. You know, I might, I might want a couple spots that are darker than others, so I can pick a couple spots and give them some extra clicks. And then I'm going to turn wire paint or uh, wireframe back off and redarken it a bit more. And the reason I did it with wireframe on and then wireframe off is because with wireframe on, it allowed me to penetrate through a lot more of the leaf material with that lighter gray color. And then with wireframe off, I tend to get just really, really dark, but that really dark only hits on certain leaves or certain spots where it can peek through the branches above. And that gives me a whole bunch of just really quick, simple variation for white to gray to black. And, again, we're done with that. So let's go back to object mode, uh, unhide the trunk, and with the trunk selected, we can drag this over, let's T, Shift-Z. 
So with the trunk selected, we give it a new material and just make it a brown color, whatever. That's where your, your procedural or your image textures for bark come in handy. So there you go. And now select our leaves, give them a new material, only we are going to split you and add a, or duplicate, I guess you, add a mix shader in there. And let's make the, let's make these ones kind of a, a dark green color. And then let's make these ones like a, a nice red color. And now again, input, attribute. And just like last time, I didn't name this one when I was making it. So by default, it's coal. And it's specific to the object. So you could have 20 different vertex maps named coal. It's just only one of them per object will be allowed. So I could have 10 trees, all different trees, and all of them set up this exact same way. And for all of them, their vertex map is going to be named coal unless I name it something different. And that's because it is mesh specific. So we plug our factor in and go C-O-L. That's a capital C-O-L. And there we go. There's a bit of an autumn leaf look. Only I think I might want that the other way around. So yeah, there's, there's a really quick, easy way to add some variation to the leaves on a tree that's variation you can uh, very specifically control, as opposed to uh, using like a color ramp and the random input or the, uh, 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 the ra random input off of the, um, what note is that, the object info or like the normal input off of the geometry, or stuff like that, instead of, of using those methods where you can't actually control where different colors are going to show up, again you can use your vertex map painting to do that. So yeah, there you go, there's three quick examples of, of ways to use the vertex map painting to control different textures or different uh, colored materials inside of a single material slot. That way you don't have to have a, a whole bunch of materials stacked on a mesh. Uh, again, it can make it easier when it comes to baking the, uh, the materials and stuff like that, just depending upon you know, what your mesh is, what situation it's going to be used for, so on and so forth. It's definitely a situational kind of uh, option. But aside from that, it tends to do uh, pretty good, and it's useful in many different situations. Well, there you have it. There's, uh, there's uh, I don't even know what to call this tutorial. I mean, I'm sure I'll figure it out by the time I post it, but there's using vertex maps to uh, control the texture on a mesh. Anyhow, uh, if you got any questions or anything, just go ahead and throw them down in the bottom. Other than that, uh, try to have a good one. Till I see y'all next time. Enjoy creating things, you know, however, however you choose to create them.